Rupa Ragunata Pade Hoebea Kuti Kabehama Bujabo say Yugala Piriti Rupa Ragunata Pade Rahu Mora Ash Pratana Koroje Sada Narota Madans so this is uh, Hanuman Prashak Swami and the Anjana Sutta Academy here in beautiful downtown, more or less, Hillsboro, Tennessee, in our Hillcrest Ashram, 902 Hillcrest Street. Hmm. And this is our regular daily uh, Nectar of Instruction Seminar which has been rescheduled from 5 a.m. until 9, 12 a.m. because of energy outage. And today we're continuing on with uh, uh, the preface to the nectar of instruction. And Prabhupada says, the Krishna consciousness movement is conducted under the supervision of Srila Rupa Goswami. The Gaudiya Vaishnavas or Bengali Vaishnavas are mostly followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of whom the six Goswamis of Vrindavan are direct disciples. Therefore, Srinartam Das Thakur has sung, Rupa Raghu Nata Pade Oive Yakuti Kabihama Bhuja Bo Bhuja Bach Seyugala Piriti. When I am eager to understand the literature given by the Goswamis, then I shall be able to understand the transcendental loving affairs of Sri, Sri Radha and Krishna. So in our uh, advanced project here of trying to follow, look up every citation that Srila Prabhupada uses, if you look up this citation, Rupadraganatha Pade, it's a part of the song which starts, Goranga Bolite Habe Pulaka Sharir and that song is one of basically two songs that uh, Prabhupada cites completely. And he cites a complete song in his purports. The other song is Narada Muni Bhajai Bina, which occurs in the uh, sixth canto. And this song, Goranga Bhulita Habeng, uh, occurs in Adi Lila, chapter 7. Hmm. So it's pretty, pretty much down there, maybe like verse 117 or something like that. And it's where the text is talking about the Panchatattva, and it's describing uh, Gadadhar Pandit. And then it just has this song included. And actually there's one more line uh, uh, in, in the song. In the songbook, it has one more line than occurs there, where, where it's cited like that extra last line. Yeah. And so not only is it, uh, you know, Cited like that is, is so important in Prabhupada's books, and you see parts of it being cited again and again. But uh, it's also the first song in Pratna. Pratna is from Pratna, Pratna by Naratam Das Thakur. And not only is it a song, but it is the first song. And if you look at it, it's a summary of all of our uh, basically philosophy, our course of development, from attachment to the material world to uh, getting free from our simple reactions, to being able to appreciate Bindavan Dham, to getting the mercy of the Manjaris, to being able to enter in, into Radha and Krishna's affairs. So it's like a summary, it seems, to all of the, the songs that follow in Prartana. You know? So you see how these, these citations are not just like some kind of random citations. It seems that they are essential citations. And since Upadesha Amrita... Uh, nectar of instruction is an overview of all of our philosophy from the most simple to the most advanced uh, then these citations then lead us into more detailed uh, study of all of our philosophy and culture from the most simple to the advanced so Padeshamita uh, Nectar of Instruction makes a fantastic study guide of, of all of Prabhupada's books yeah. wonderful curriculum yeah. so uh, and we've given a whole seminar, like a three, three, four-day seminar on this with accompanying songs. And it's very satisfying, you know, uh, program. 
So everybody should research this, memorize this. Because maybe, maybe some people, okay, first time through, just read it. The second time, you can start looking through these citations like that. Okay. It says that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared, Baba says, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in order to bestow upon human society the benediction of the science of Krishna. Okay. Yeah. So this is many times Prabhupada talks about the science of Krishna because science is the predominating philosophy of life, of reality. You know, it may be dropping down, it may be replaced by something else. Prabhupada commented like that. It's still very, very powerful that life comes from matter. We can explain everything by science, you know, molecular atomic theory, etc. You know. So, Lord Chaitanya appeared to bestow upon human society the benediction of the science of Krishna. The most exalted of all the activities of Lord Krishna, so we're talking about the science of Krishna, and what is the most exalted aspect of that science, are his pastimes of conjugal love with the gopis. So right here, in the preface to the first instructions for neophyte devotees, Prabhupada mentions the gopis. Okay, but in what way and to what extent? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in the mood of Srimati Radharani, the best of the gopis. Therefore, to understand the mission uh, of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which is to bestow upon human society the benediction of Krishna consciousness, therefore to understand the mission of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and follow in his footsteps, which means that we should also bestow the science upon people, one must very seriously follow in the footsteps of the six Goswamis, Sri Rupa, Sanatan, Bhattaraguna, Sri Jiva, Gopal Bhatta, and Dasaraguna. And notice Baba quotes all six Goswamis here for our purification, for his satisfaction. So you see Papa kind of regresses. He starts off with Rupa Goswami. Okay, he's the author of the book. And then uh, progresses to Lord, regresses to Lord Chaitanya, who is, who, of whom he is the representative. Uh, there's a verse in the introduction, invocation to the Bhagavad Gita, Sri uh, Chaitanya Manobi Stam Stapitam Dina Bhutale. And that's the verse which specifically establishes Rupa Goswami as the authorized representative of Lord Chaitanya, the Acharya. Because there's so many people that are claiming to follow Lord Chaitanya, you don't follow Rupa Goswami. You know? So, he introduces Rupa Goswami, he regresses to, um, with all six Goswamis, to Lord Chaitanya. You mentioned all six? Yeah. yeah. Bengali Vaishnavas, Lord Ch- all six Goswamis, and regresses to, to Lord Chaitanya. And then, we can see that our mission is to understand uh, Lord Chaitanya's mission and follow in his footsteps. You know? But how can we do that? Therefore, to understand, we must very seriously follow in the footsteps of the six Goswamis. Sri Rupa Goswami was the leader of all the Goswamis. And to guide our activities, he gave us this Upadesham Rita, the nectar of instruction to follow. As Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left behind him the eight verses known as Shikshastaka, Sri Rupa Goswami gave us Upadesham Rita. So we may become pure Vaishnavas. So very heavy glorification of Upadesha Mrita. Uh, Shah is pretty much putting it on the same level in many ways as the Shikshastaka, which of course is the only thing written by Lord Chaitanya. All of our, all of our philosophy is there. It's a whole chapter in the Chaitanya Charita Mrita. And right here, of course, the Shikshastaka is being cited. So then we would follow it in our in our practices and find the whole thing uh, where it's listed like that uh, we, we, we haven't got the citation right here but there's one citation in uh, we have an index let's see we're going to do this I guess we should introduce this right here um, we have an index of Prabhupada's books and in there we have a, this Shikshastaka cited but I think we're going to merge our index into our encyclopedia why not you yeah. And the whole thing will be called Sticks and Stones. Because Hanuman, when he was fighting with people, like after he saw Sita, 
he would just pick up at whatever was available, whatever sticks and stones, logs and mountaintops. Yeah. He would take one dead horse and use it to beat the other horses, yeah. or use his claws or teeth. So we should have that same nature, just whatever resources are available here and there, we can smash people with them. So that'll be our, our, our index of, of, of resources, all of our essays, poetry. So in there, we'll probably list the, um, in this Shikshastika, um, uh, verse and citation. There's a site, a couple of places. Well, that's, that's actually, I think, it's kind of offensive now. <laughs> okay. Probably gives a very nice summary of those, yeah. Anyway, the Shikshastika, of course, without the, without the word, okay, we got it. There we go. Shikshastika is at the end of the introduction to Shema Bhagavatam. Prabhupada puts it there. And I think he may also put it in the teachings of Lord Chaitanya, but for sure in Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is an entire chapter, okay, at the Nyancha Lila. So there's the references for looking up the Shikshastika. Rupa Goswami gave us Upadesha Mrita so we become pure Vaishnavas. So Upadesha Mrita is sufficient to become pure Vaishnavas. When he was in San Francisco, I heard, uh, Berkeley actually, uh, 19, what was it, 70, uh, 677? Maybe 76 in the fall. He came for Rathi Akra, huh? Probably gave um, uh, class, and I heard from his lips, uh, Baba said, anybody who chants Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Garadar Shivas Hari Gora Bhaktivinda and follows it with Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare has achieved the perfection of life but if you want to preach you should probably read my books and I w- would say we can accelerate the process of just chanting those two mantras by also by uh, reading Prabhupada's books but in many ways, all the Supadeshan Mrita, if we follow the links like this, and just in itself, if we really understand it, it's, it's sufficient, you know, to become pure life novels. All right? Now, that, that pretty much finishes off the preface. Uh, the, in, in the preface, actually, there's a preface and the introduction are in the same you know, document here because they're so short, you know. Uh, the preface of a book, one time in the Berkeley Public Library, we were looking in a reader's, uh, writer's guide, and it said that a preface should include um, the purpose of the book, what, it, what it's trying to do, the qualifications of the writer, what qualifications are expected of the teacher, sorry, of the student, and under what circumstances the book is being produced. So I think we find all these in this little preface, like that. You know? uh, for example, a preface may be, somebody may say, my name is Bill Smith. I work at Center High School in Center, Indiana, in the United States. And we discovered there was no good books for calculus for high school, high school students. I'm a mathematics teacher. So in the school year of 1985, you know, uh, uh, myself and my fellow teachers and students uh, then wrote this book for uh, calculus for high, sc- high school students. It's expected the student will have already finished analytical geometry before starting. So you see, that's a preface. In the introduction, it introduces the actual material you know, in the book, it introduces the content. So it may introduce the whole, whole thing, the whole summary of all the content, or it may just inter- introduce the first verse. So we see here uh, that the introduction that follows is introducing just the first verse. In all spiritual affairs, one's first duty is to control his mind and senses. Yeah? Unless one controls his mind and senses, one cannot make any advancement in spiritual life. Everyone within this material world is engrossed in the modes of passion and ignorance. One must promote himself to the platform of Satvaguna by following the instructions of Rupa Goswami 
and then everything concerning how to make further progress will be revealed. So, of course, the four, four nutshell verses of Bhagavad Gita are 10.8, 9, 10, 11. That's easy to remember because 10.8 is 108. And there it says, Tesham evanu kampartam mahama jnana jam tamaha. That if we are in the mode of goodness, if we are initiated devotees, if we're constantly engaged in the service of Krishna, uh, which means uh, worshiping the deity, at least, um, then Krishna within the heart will enlighten us. And public is very strong uh, declaration of this in the purport. You, know, you can't take advantage of your movement. You can't take advantage of the spiritual master's association. If we're sincere, if we're fixed in the mode of goodness, you know, you know, then Krishna in the heart will, will, will reveal this to us. So we, should, uh, we shouldn't doubt our intuition and inspiration. You know, somebody may say, Prabhu, do this, do that. And we have some neurotic, crazy authority in our institution. Or in so many cases, you know, you know vote for me. I'm your wife, do what I say. I'm your husband, do what I say. I'm your father. Well, if we have some intuition about things, we should also respect that as an authority. If we are in the mode of goodness, Sattvagun. So pretty much the first verse, you know, we'll talk about how to be in Sattvagun and we can test ourselves. Okay. Everything converting, concerning how to make further progress will be revealed. Of course, being revealed... Uh, may mean that we, we a, a, a particular purport or phrase or some advice from a friend is revealed to us. Krishna's revealing, revealing to us from an external source, which is how it usually happens. But it's confirmed from within. We have a strong, you know, intuitive confirmation. Yes, this is Krishna talking to me. And sometimes, not as not as commonly, we we'll get it as an internal thing, and then we should confirm it externally with Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra. Advancement in Krishna consciousness depends on the attitude of the follower. Okay, attitude. This is booty, intelligence, perspective. Ad- advancement depends upon our perspective. In, uh, in Hindi, ISKCON is called the Antarastrika Sri Krishna Bhavanam Rita Sangha. Yeah. So Bhavanam Rita means Krishna consciousness, our Bhava. Yeah. Uh, yam, yam yam vapi smaram bhavan whatever bhava we have or booty perspective we have you know, at the time of death that's where we go when the airplane is landing it has, it has to have a proper attitude towards the, the runway the pitch the roll and the yaw have to all be correct pitch is how much the nose is up and down roll is how much the left and right wings are rotating up and down, left to right. And yaw is how much the thing is rotating so that it's going in with the wing towards the runway rather than the nose. This can happen. So we have to have the proper attitude. This is bhava. This is fixed up in the morning, especially like Mangalarti, chant these songs, meditate. We get the proper intelligence, perspective. And on that basis, we think, manas, okay, Advancement of Krishna consciousness depends on the attitude of the follower. Yeah. A follower of the Krishna consciousness movement should become a perfect Goswami. Vaishnavas are generally known as Goswamis. In Vrindavan, this is the title by which the director of each temple is known. One who wants to come, become a perfect devotee of Krishna must become a Goswami. Yeah, okay. First we have to become Goswamis and then perfect devotees. Go means the senses and Swami means the master. Unless one controls his senses and mind, one cannot become a Goswami. To achieve the highest success in life by becoming a Goswami and then a pure devotee of the Lord, one must follow the instructions known as Upadesha Mrita which have been given by Srila Rupa Goswami. So pretty much this is introducing the first verse, second verse, third verse, fourth, fifth, sixth. Yeah. And seventh is the association with, six, sixth is the association with Madhakari. And seven, eight, eight goes into uh, Raganuga Bhakti. So then we have the opportunity of becoming a pure devotee in these more advanced stages like that. Supadeshamrita 
takes us all the way to Radha Kun. But in terms of becoming a Goswami, that's the first few verses and hops back and forth a little bit. You know? So we see this. We're, we're engaged in Bhakti Yoga. You know? But in the beginning, it's Karma Mishra, Bhakti Yoga. You know, it's Bhakti Yoga, but it's mixed up. We're doing all these, do this, do that. You know? Don't do this, don't do that. It's, we're doing things, rituals. And we, become, we follow that, we become a little more clear-headed and we begin to organize our understanding of what we're doing so we can do it properly with full effect. Then it becomes jnana, jnana, jnana mishra, bhakti yoga. Okay? And like we're doing right now. Okay? And then later on, dhyana, where we actually can focus and concentrate on the essentials of Krishna. And that then brings us to real jnana, bhakti, jnana mishra, to bhakti, bhakti yoga. But we're just focusing on just on you know, developing our, our motivation. Doing the right thing with proper, uh, guided by proper logical understanding, with concentration, uh, with, with a direct, direct effort to stimulate our, more, our pure motivation. Okay. Yeah. To achieve the highest success in life by becoming a Goswami and then a pure devotee. Okay. Supa Goswami has, uh, uh, Supa Goswami has given many other books, such as Bhakti Rasamita Sindhu, the Madhava and Lalita Madhava. So here we have a whole little library being introduced to us. We want to follow these links, which we should. Upadesha Mrita we take as a summary of everything. Bhakti Raksamita Sindhu is the complete science of Krishna consciousness. And the Dagda Madhava and Lalita Madhava, two dramas, are demonstration of that. They show us all the mellows in action. The Dagda Madhava begins with V, so it's about Krishna in Vrindavan, and Lalita Madhava is about Krishna in Dwarka. But Upadesha Mrita, Prabhu says, constitutes first instructions for neophyte devotees. So we feel justified in making it the, uh, the foundation of our whole educational complex curriculum here for anybody who wants to become a <laughs> disciple and student. Once you follow these instructions very strictly, okay, we're still working on that, then it will be easier to make one's life successful. Hare Krishna. So Baba finishes everything off with a sacred hallelujah here. Hare Krishna. Then it has, uh, I'm reading from the folio, not from the folio, I'm reading from the database dot, whatever it is, org. A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami, Vishvaru, Mahotsava, Krishna Balaram, Mandir, Raman, Reiki, Vrindavan, India. Just so probably finished it. But if you look back in the book, I have the original book here, and I hope it's in, it's in most of the books. Um, if we go in the book, and I should have memorized this, then we look at the, uh, at the end of the preface here. Okay. And it, there, here in this one, it gives the date when Prabhupada did it. I don't know why they didn't include that in the, uh, in the uh, vitabase.org, whatever it is. It says September 20th, 1975. So Vishvarup Mahotsava comes that time almost every year, about September. And also the same time as Disappearance Day of Haridas Thakur, I think Appearance Day of Akhiduna Thakur, I think Vamana Dwadasi. So that week is like a real whole festival time. And specifically Vishvarup Mahotsava uh, was the anniversary of Srila Sanyas. So how could Prabhupada not be thinking about that when he finally dedicated this book and everything? You know? um, and so we can have a birthday, birthday party. This year, 1975, 85, 95, uh, 2005, 2015. So this year, Upadesha Mrita will be 39 years old. We can have a birthday cake with 39 candles on it and have a nice festival. Recite the, read the entire thing, you know, practically speaking, in our, our annual Vaishnava calendar, you can have a, an anniversary for so many of Prabhupada's books. He mentions the dates and stuff like that. You know. So, and also then Prabhupada's signatures here. So try and copy it, huh? I dare you. <laughs> Raganuga. And if you do, you'll get such an experience of, of the intensity of Prabhupada's consciousness and dancing and movement. You'll be dancing with Prabhupada. It's such an incredible thing to see how you can follow how it's full of curls and spins like that and reverse spins, you know, such an experience like that, you know, yeah. 
So pretty much that's in our uh, summary of our preface here. And uh, who, who are we speaking for here? Who's our audience? Well, we, in our, our curriculum, we suggest reading Upadeshamrita and the Bhakta program you know, when you're getting ready for first initiation. When you're first experimenting with the Krishna consciousness movement, even though you may, may not want to uh, become initiated formally. At some point, maybe we'll discuss our American Bhagavad curriculum. You know? So first time, you just read through it, a little discussion. And uh, now, uh, we're going through it, and we're reading about reading into the, uh, uh, the links like that. So I would say, at this point, we're really focusing, I guess, on people who are, are preparing to take sannyas. You know? Maybe the last thing we'll do here is give a whole sannyas curriculum for people who want to uh, get ready to take sannyas, sannyas order of life. So Upadesha Mita, of course, our, our uh, epistemology is we don't study one thing and forget about it, but rather we, we, we just go through it again with more depth kind of a spiral, spiral education. So we read Upadesha Mita one time, and we read it again for Bhakti Shastri, and now we're talking about it at uh, Bhakti Bhai Baba level here, you know, reading through it and, and looking for the sing- links and citations, the background, and then, boy, and maybe even following those, those, those links and citations. Okay, so thank you very much for your association, and please forgive, forgive any offenses and inadequacies such as talking too fast or trying to include too much information. Hare Krishna.